Today we're going to take a look at a Sundown Salt Series Amplifier. What is a salt amplifier, you may ask? Insane power, low voltages, titanium look, newest Korean board technology, voltage readout, temperature readout, all that good stuff. But I'm sure you may be asking, what does SALT stand for? It's the acronym for Sundown Audio Low Voltage Technology. Now let's take a look on down for sound shop. You can see the SALT 2 is $769 at the current price here for a 2K amp. That's kind of expensive, but uh, you guys want Korean. This is what it takes. So let's unbox this SALT 2, take a closer look see what we have here open up the box you can see we have the manual we have the base knob and the base cable and some extras here take it out of the box out of the packaging amplifier is very big for a 2k it does come with some extra screws um, these are Allen size screws and also the base cable here is a cat 5e e cable which is nice So that way if it ever goes bad, you can just replace it very easily Base knob has voltage and temperature Power protect and clipping and also comes with a little screw driver so that you can adjust the um, Voltage make sure it matches up with your system The amp here you can see is this gray color a little bit unique and you can also notice that it has the logo mounted two different ways, so it doesn't matter which way you mount it, you can always see Sundown Audio Salt 2. On one end of the amplifier, Tiffany style RCA inputs and outputs. Also, lights for power, protect, and clip. There's a status indicator there, I'll talk about that in a minute. Gain control, variable subsonic, variable bass boost, remote bass connection. Low pass filter, which is 24 dB per octave, phase from 0 to 180. This amp is linkable, so you set it either to master or slave, depending on how you're running it with multiples. And yeah, there you go. On the one end has lots of goodness. Let's we'll switch around to the other side. 1.0 inputs for power and ground, and there are dual outputs for the speakers. And these are 8 gauge for the speakers, again 1.0 for the power and ground. And it is a monoblock amp, but having two different outputs gives you more flexibility for wiring multiple subwoofers or dual voice coil subwoofers. So we always like to see that. On the amp, this four pin connection for status, what this is, it gives you the ability using the wire included with the little plug on it, is to do remote status connection for power or protect. So if you want to extend some LEDs, you can do that. As far as dimensions, 17.5 inches long by 8.75 inches wide, millimeter equivalents as well. As far as the height, 2.75 inches or 70 millimeters. Now let's get the amp connected up, try it out on the dyno. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. First up, let's try four ohms. Amplifier is rated at 500 watts at 14.4 volts. Certified test is first. And oh yeah, easily get that. 837 at 14.4. So very much underrated at four ohm load. Uncertified up to clipping. Keeps counting 881 at 14.3. Getting close to doubling that rated power. Dynamic. Burst tone here. You can see 880. Oop, we just jumped over 900. 904 at 14.4. Now the most impressive part here to me is the efficiency. 92% at 4 ohms. That's really good efficiency. Let's try 2 ohms. Amplifier is rated 1,000 watts at 14.4. Certified test first at the 1% THD. There you go. <laughs> 1,454 watts. So well, again, well above the rated power. Uncertified up to the clipping point. 
1567, 14.24. I will try the dynamic test using the 40 hertz burst tone. Nicely over 1600 watts. There you go, almost 1700. 1677.14.46. 80% efficient is what we measured here. So again, very good. Now let's try the one ohm load. Rated 2000 watts, 14.4 volts. Certified test as always is first. And yes, 2220 watts at 14.28. So easily meets that rated power with even less than 14.4 volts. Salt for the win. Now let's try uncertified up to clipping. Oh, over 2500, 2516 at 14.11 volts. Nice power. Now let's reset the dyno one more time here for the dynamic test. See how much headroom the amplifier has. There you go, over 3,000 watts, 3,041 at 14.38 volts. Now, as far as efficiency goes, what I noticed is the clamp actually jumped from 165 amps to 225. So what I did is I averaged the two to be 195 and we got 80% efficient at one ohm. That's really good at the one ohm load overall. Results, rated power plus. You just saw most of the tests except the 8 ohm test and we got almost rated power for 4 ohms at 8 ohms. But if you want to see more tests, stick around to the very end because I do have some more. Now the do it bump dough, we're going to show this on the kicker quad box. But before we do that, I want to show you something about the voltmeter here that comes with it, the remote base adjustment. It's very bright to begin with, but check out this other thing. Listen to the difference in the volume here. This is with it all the way down, the bass knob, and I'm gonna turn it up very slowly and listen to the bass. As you can see, just about like a 16th of a turn really bumps up the base. All right, time for some woofer flex. Base I love you too, Basotronics. So you can see bump though it does. Now let's try to see what's inside of this Korean half bridge amplifier. We've already taken the bottom plate off so we'll flip it over. Here you can see the dual, actually quad transformers there. Four large rail voltage caps. Here are the input filtering caps. 1000 microfarad, 35 volt caps on. These are 105 degrees Celsius caps. That's always good to see. Those last longer than the 85 degrees Celsius caps. 3300 microfarad, 100 volt for the rails. Again, that's the big four that you see back there. There's the driver card there for the power supply. And here's the amp overall. Korean Class D half bridge, built like a boss. Let's talk about the good stuff. Has a massive heat sink. Barely got warm during any of the tests. Did rated power plus quite a bit more. Tiffany style RCAs for inputs and outputs. It is linkable. 
So you can hook up multiples of these for your subwoofers. 24 dB per octave crossovers, we love to see that. And the remote base knob has voltage and temperature and clipping and power and all that good stuff. Things that could be better, the amp is huge and it's heavy. It has a logarithmic pot on the base knob. I showed you that example. Also, the base knob is plastic. We like to see a metal base knob. Korean amp equals big money. So be ready to pay for it if you want an amp like this. And no half ohm dynamic. We actually blew up one of the amps trying half ohm dynamic. So I would not recommend running very low uh, ohm loads on these particular amps. So there you have it, the test of the SALT 2. This amp was sent to me from Down for Sound so I could check it out. But you guys know I'm gonna tell you what I think as I've already showed you. So I appreciate you watching. Make sure you stick around until after these end credits because I do have another run. I run the amp at under one ohm. We find out how it performs. So thanks as always for watching. Until next time, you know where Big D is. I'll be testing more amps and I am out of here. Yeah, that's right. Got some extra tests here for those who stick around to the end. We're going to try the 0.8 certified 2,595 watts at 14.4. So there you go. Good power at 0.8. Let's try uncertified up to clipping. Again, 0.8 ohms. Amp is not rated to this ohm load. We got 3,000 watts at 14.24. Then we'll try dynamic. Dynamic burst tone into the amp, over 3,000. Look at this, 3,500, 3,600, keeps counting up. 3,676 at 14, oop, 3,734, jump one more time. Here's the final dyno sheet for the last one ohm and 0.8 test. I did use double one alt inputs.